Today's video was sponsored by Squarespace. Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be discussing another part, or I guess like part two, of my favorite fonts. If you've seen my last video, I put it out like late last year. I'm very passionate about fonts and I think it's very important to understand how they work and how to use them properly in your designs. All of that comes with a lot of practice and familiarizing yourself with type. Uh, type is a really awesome thing. It has a lot of really cool history. There's a lot of amazing typographers out there and it can really make or break your design work uh, by choosing the right fonts. I recently had a thread on Twitter about <laughs> fonts that I don't like slash fonts that I think are exponentially worse than Comic Sans. I got a lot of, got of love and I got a lot of hate on that tweet. And what I wanna do with this video is show you some of the fonts that I'm using right now. And this changes all the time, of course. Uh, I'll kind of like comment a little bit on like some of the fonts that I mentioned in my tweet thread. So if you want to go check that out, go head over to my Twitter at kill.lauren. Um, check out that thread so you can see the fonts that I ripped to shreds. Um, and I'm going to comment on some fonts that I'm suggesting today that you can use as alternates to the ones that I think are worse than Comic Sans. So I broke this list down into how many categories? Five categories, sans serif, serif, slab serif, script slash cursive, handwriting, that is all in one category. And then I also have a decorative category. So same format as my last type video, but with a bunch of updates on some new fonts that I'm using and fonts that I'm really loving and hopefully some fonts that you guys can check out and start using in your work. A few things I look for in type and this is just general across the board and it also applies to when i'm pairing type as well i look for a type that has a very distinct style i don't like type that is not i don't want to say generic but it, it seems like it could be used in too many uh circumstances i want something that has a very clear um journey i guess that's how i would put it i look for fonts that i know i kind of like have a vision in my head of like you know, based on like colors I'm using, what maybe my client is looking for, or kind of just like the vibe I'm going for. I kind of like see in my head of like, okay, I know I want something that's really kind of like gritty. I want something that's like extremely clean and techy and kind of like has a lot of character to it. And so then I start looking and I start scrolling through all of my fonts that I have in my library. And I feel like I should mention this too, is all the fonts I'm mentioning today are from Adobe Fonts, except for one group. And I will tell you guys how to get this group of fonts as well. So I highly recommend using Adobe Fonts. They're fully licensed for commercial use. And if you are paying for the Creative Suite or the Adobe Creative Suite, you are already paying for the Adobe fonts. I know a lot of designers don't use Adobe fonts, so I highly recommend using it. If you're paying for the full subscription, uh, definitely don't leave this perk out because it's really helpful. I'm looking for fonts that have a lot of character. I want attitude. I want them to have like a clear defined path of what they should be used for. When I'm pairing fonts, I typically look for ones that I can use that might be like in the same family already. So I could be using like a Helvetica bold and then for like my sub, header or my body copy, I could be using just like a Helvetica new. Um, fonts that already pair well together are typically ones that are already in the same font family, just different weight variants. Pairing a font with a font already in its font family is always like a clear winner. But what if you don't want to do that? A lot of my design work is kind of like vintage. So when I'm designing and I'm using type that like the headline might be like really like vintage -y, a heavy kind of like 70s script. I might pair it with something that might be a little bit of a, a curvier, goofy serif font, something that is still like in the same like vibe, the same historical moment in time, um, things that can just pair together based on their trend. If that makes sense. I did not explain that very well. I'm sweating. So overall, when pairing fonts, I typically look for ones that just have good synergy together. They have great contrast. They make sense like historically, if it's from an, a time period, all of the fonts used and that kind of like makes sense together. They don't have to be made in that time period. So the first category we're starting off with are sans serif fonts. The first one I'm gonna be starting off with is this font called Degular in the in the variant Regular. So Degular Regular. It was designed by James Edmondson. I've mentioned him a few times on my channel. He's an amazing typographer and he's the founder of Ono Type. 
up in, I think, Oakland. And he has some really awesome type. I have a few of his other fonts in here that I'm gonna be mentioning as well. Degular is like one of those fonts that is kind of like seen in this, I don't even know how to describe this community of design. Like I feel like I'm starting to like dip my toes into uh, this style. It's very, very clean, very modern. There's not typically a lot going on. It's generally pretty minimal. And Degular is great for like uh, just black on white, text or something just like text on a solid background, whether that be a bright color or it could just be knocked out in white. It's a very clean font. And I use it not as often as I would like because I'm not doing too much like big layout work right now, but Degular is just like, it's an awesome, very clean font. So I'm not gonna try to go into too much detail on all of these because I'll be here forever. But yeah, Degular. Next, I have Forma DJR Deck Regular, and there are a bunch of variants of this on Adobe Fonts, but Forma DJR Deck Regular is probably my favorite. This is one that I feel like tags into the same uh, category of like designers who might use Degular. It's very clean, very modern, used on a lot of black and white work and also a lot of really bright color, but it's generally paired with something that doesn't have too much texture or it might be like a really soft gradient, so. And this third sans serif font is one of my all-time favorites. It's one that I used throughout my channel. It's called Rock Grotesque. And I've mentioned it a few times for people who have asked me about like the fonts that I use on my channel. And Rock Grotesque is a fantastic font because it has so many variations in the font family. You have everything from a super condensed heavy weight or even like a hairline font all the way to this like insanely wide extended font that can be used in some circumstances, but I think it's awesome that this one font has so much flexibility in it that there are just so many variations. And this is also a really great font for a lot of people who really like titling Gothic and Road, two fonts that are going away this June from Adobe Fonts. I am very upset <laughs> about that. Rock Grotesque, highly recommend it many ways to use it, go check it out. This next one is called Cable or New Cable Regular. This is a font that I see as a very like retro 70s font. It has a lot of curves and really straight kind of harsh lines. I like to think of this as like the cool guys Futura Medium. If you saw in my uh, Twitter thread, Futura Medium is a font that I do not care for. I love Futura Condensed a lot, but I do not like Futura Medium at all. I think it's really generic and it's too pointy. New Cable Regular or Cable is just one of these fonts that like looks really great on t-shirts, especially if you're trying to achieve that like retro 70s tee. And that's a common trend in my design. I know it's a common trend in a lot of designers right now. And it has a lot of like really interesting characters. Like the G is awesome, love it. And the last one in my sans serif category is Balboa Condensed. Another font that I threw under the bus in my thread was Beavis New. And I don't like the standard version of Beavis New because it's all caps. I know Beavis has like other variations where they're not all caps, um, but since it's so overused and I don't think it looks that great because the characters are pretty generic to me, it's like it has too many uses. Um, and I like fonts that have more of like their niche setting. So Balboa Condensed is one of these fonts that looks really great in headlines. It looks really great. Like I use it on band tees a lot because it can fit a lot of uh, letters in a very short uh, space, a short space, a very small space because it is a condensed font. All right, moving on to our next category, which is serif fonts. So the first one we're gonna start off with is a font called Span in the variant Regular. This is a font that I stumbled on a few weeks ago uh, looking for some cool kind of like semi-retro type for a client of mine. And this is one that I have found to be pretty good for logos. And it has these really wide serifs, not like really wide serifs, but it has these serifs that kind of like come to these really nice points. And I feel like it really hits home with like all, like that 70s vibe, but also like that 50s kind of like housewife aesthetic. I think it looks really great, all caps, looks really great in title casing, and it has a bunch of uh, weight variants too. This next font I will probably mispronounce, um, sorry, I'm sorry, <laughs> but it's called Temeraire, Italian, Italic, to be specific. It's called Temeraire, but the variant I'm specifically talking about is the Italian Italic version. There is something about this font that 
just makes me happy. <laughs> it has so much flair to it. I love the varying widths in it. I love the italic version because a lot of italic just has a lot of like the curls on the tails. Tamarayer is definitely one that like is very retro. I see it used in like a lot of like the fruit sticker trend that's going around. It just seems very like innocent. I love it so much about it. I wanna see more of it and I wanna be able to use more of it in my work, so. This next one comes from my attempt to find the type used in the Knives Out logo, which is a logo that I absolutely adore. And after doing some research, it was all a custom designed logo. So this next font is one that I am seeing as kind of like a substitute for a similar vibe. It's not quite as pointy as the Knives Out logo. It's called Buena Park and the variant regular. It has a lot of those kind of like angled cuts in the letters. I think there's a lot of like rusticness about it. it has these little curly tails and the r hooks around with this nice teardrop shape the g is beautiful i absolutely love the e and the a i definitely want to be using buena some more in my work but i love her she's great great serif this next one is one that people might not agree with me uh, as much on. It's called Cooper. And Cooper's been used a ton. It's an old font and it's been used in a ton of logos. Like the Odd Feature logo is just Cooper. The version I'm talking about specifically is the Cooper Standard Black. I know there's an italic version. I know there's like lighter weights of it too, but this one's definitely my favorite. Tagging on to a few of the fonts that I already talked about is that if you want to hit home with a very easy, simple, clean, retro feel, especially in your type, use Cooper. It's a great font for using a lot of color because the weight is so heavy. And also you kern it all together. I love a really tightly kerned <laughs> Cooper word or a title, band name, brand, whatever. You kern it together. You have all of that space in the letters to do whatever you want. You could do illustrations inside. You could do cool textures. You could do like stripes of like, you know, like rainbows that are going together. So I see Cooper as like the epitome of a 70s ringer tee. This next one, I believe this is the proper name for it. It's called P22 Nackanack. And this is a a serif that I think is great for something that you're trying to communicate as a very clean brand. I see this as like your youth for the people skincare. It has kind of like a retro feel. The actual serifs are very soft. It feels like a very light weight of Cooper, but definitely more delicate, much more dainty. Moving on to the next category, which is probably my least favorite category of fonts in general because I just don't use them very much. And that is slab serifs. And slab serifs have some uses, but they're also pretty difficult to work with because some of them can get pretty wide and heavy and it makes, you know, readability harder. They're not very, like, super great for logos. They can be used in logos well if you use the right one. So I try to keep all of my slab serifs that I selected to be on a little bit more of the standard width. Um, I know some of the ones that I mentioned in my last type video, they're really wide, like Hellenic Wide is a great font, love her, but is very difficult to use, especially like in logos. I had a client who requested that and I tried so hard to make it work and it just, it's too big, it's too wide of a font. <laughs> so the first one on our list is probably one of my favorites that I'm using right now, which is called Presley Slab. It's a very dainty, I like to think of it as like a more delicate and condensed version of Bartelli's. It has these cute little curls on the letters and like the S is kind of like, it's a, a dainty Western font, if you will. Next is one from my dear friend, James Edmondson over at Ono, the font Beastly. Beastly is a great font because it has so much character to it. I wish I could use it more like in my designs, but it can get pretty difficult to read at times, unfortunately. And I recently worked a little bit of Beastly into my last video. We'll see if you guys can spot which one it was. But it has, it definitely has its uses and I think the amount of character that this font specifically has is worth noting. And it has a bunch of different variations based on the amount of points that are in each letter. So a 12 point all the way up to a 72 points. This next one is a very safe bet for a sans serif. It's called Mortise. And the variant I'm talking about specifically is X Bold. This is a very uh, play by the rules slab serif. If you want something really br bright for a headline, 
definitely recommend Mortise. Gotta mess with the kerning a little bit because sometimes O's have a little bit too much spacing around them. You gotta, you know, pull them together, give some more some space um, because it can be so heavy on the eyes, you know. Really watch your kerning with like a, a heavier slab, Sarah. This next one is a very light and delicate one like Presley, which is a Sutro slab. My favorite variant of it is the Sutro Light. It feels kind of like a Bartelli's, a Presley type of like very open and airy. Also a very safe one like Mortise. This next one is also one of my favorite slabs that I'm using right now. It's called Hatch. There's a lot of interesting characteristics about this. It's also kind of like Western 70s vibe. My favorite character might be the A and also the G. I'm like usually pretty weak for Gs because Gs you can do a lot with. And I like that it has like the little like cut into the G. I love that. It's so great. It's like that little detail. Like it gives it so much more character, has so much more personality by just adding that little cut out in the G. It's fantastic. Great for logos, great for headlines. We love her. The next category is a category that I have previously struggled with, but I am trying to get better at using, and that is scripts slash hand lettering, cursive, all of that jazz into one category. I generally have struggled in the past with finding good scripts that I like, and I feel like that's because a lot of scripts that are out there are kind of the like dibble, dibble dabble into the cheese category, where they're used by like your bloggers, your bakeries, your you know, more of like the, your photographers, like the more of the cliches of people who would typically use a script as their logo. So I've been very afraid of them for a while and I definitely had to spend a lot of time researching more scripts to find some good ones. So these are the five scripts that I'm using right now and I'm pretty happy with all of these. The first one on the list is Cosmopolitan. This is a really cool script because the letters are not connected. I think this is really awesome because it feels very like 60s hotel, like Ace Hotel vibes. Very Palm Springs, old signage. And because it doesn't have any connecting pieces, you can really play with your kerning a bit. You can actually get a little, get a little fun with it, you know, kern it out. Go wild. Love Cosmopolitan. This next one is one of my favorites too, and it, which is Mascot. I believe this is the one I used in my Burger King logo. Mascot MVB Regular is the one I used in my Burger King logo. This is a really great, just clean, simple, vintage, script. It kind of like leans into like that little league vibe. It leans kind of like more into like the cheesy old t-shirts that you have as like a kid. Love mascot. This next one is called Funky Dory. It's a really heavy script with a lot of character. It's very like painterly. It's pretty 70s. It looks great in logos. Looks great like on t-shirts. We love Funky Dory. This next one is Paragroy Regular. I see this as a, like a diner menu font. I think what gives it away for that diner vibe is the E. It's a lowercase e, but it's actually a capital E, but it has, you know, a little bit of like that three. And I think that's really great. Some scripts use a capital E or like random capital letters in with a regular like script feel. And I think Paragroy is a great example of that. And this next one is one I use a ton in my t-shirts that I've designed and also just like in the general like bootleg look that I go for sometimes, which is a scriptorama. It's a great like old sign font, like the old like handwritten, like your Home Depot signs or like the lettering that you see like done on windows sometimes with like those really cool markers. Um, scriptorama trade show to be specific um, is definitely one that I will always use if I need like an easy script for a maybe like a bootleg design. Now this last category is by far my favorite category and it is a group of fonts that I that spend probably the most amount of time, which are decorative fonts. Right off the bat, this is the group of fonts that I did not get from Adobe Fonts. And this group of fonts is called Glyph World. So Glyph World was designed by Leo Marl, this is a word I'm gonna have a lot of uh, difficulty saying, Leo Marl Bornado. She's an amazing typographer. She has a lot of really awesome type. Go check her out on Instagram. Her handle is fun.weirdo. She's incredible and she is the like brain behind glyph world and glyph world is free you can go check glyph world out online it's glyphworld.online there's a bunch of like really really awesome fonts so i'm going to show you guys so the first one and i think this one is underrated for the glyph world font pack which is airland airland is a very very simple sans serif font and i can't tell you 
why I like this font so much, but there's something about it that like screams to me. If you saw my recent 1975 poster that I posted on Instagram, all of the fonts, except for the little tiny ones that I change, like individual letters, all of that type is Airland. There's a lot that you can do with it. I added like some strokes and everything to like change the weight a bit, but there's such beautiful simplicity about Airland. Next, we have Animal Soul. Like the rest of the fonts and the rest of this decorative category, all of these fonts can be used in really wacky ways, but overall, they have to be used very wisely. Just because you have a really crazy fun font doesn't mean that your design is automatically good. It has to be done with, you know, following the same rules of design and everything has to make sense. Don't just put something in, don't just do one of these crazy fonts because you want to, but make sure it makes sense. Give it a purpose, make sure it fits within the style that you're going for and then you should be good. And don't use it too much either, especially like really decorative fonts. Be careful and use them wisely. Animal Soul, groovy, she's wiggly, so much fun. I love the eye, the little like little X on top of the eye. Oh my God. Next is Desert. This is kind of like a metal Icelandic type of font. There's a lot in this that I absolutely love. I specifically love the A and I've used it in my choir boy poster and I've also hidden a few uh, the desert letters in my 1975 poster. Next is flower. I haven't used flower yet, but I really want to. It's kind of like this knit. It almost looks like it's an embroidery pattern. Uh, then we have glacier, similar to desert, but with more like structure, built a little bit more on like angles versus something a little bit more organic. Meadow is this super curly, like these rolling hills, like a meadow. I love the W and I also love the A. Next we have meadow mountain, which is kind of like a pixely font. Then we have Wasteland, which is this absolutely crazy font. My friend Julia described it as, um, it looks like uncooked pasta, which I think is a very accurate description. And then we have Forest, which is a little bit, like I see it as kind of like a mix between that stitched look and also kind of like this pixely look. So that's all for Glyph World. All of these, like I said, can be found online at glyphworld.online. This is not sponsored by Glyph Roll, by the way. But these are truly amazing fonts. Please try to work them into your pieces. Use them sparingly, use them wisely. Make sure you have reason behind using them so it doesn't seem Lex Daisical. Now we have Ekman Psych, which is also designed by James Edmondson over at Ono. Ekman Psych is like a font that's slowly been working its way into uh, like the mainstream. A lot of clothing brands have started using it recently. I'm just like, I'm seeing it more often. So the norm, the normies are getting to it, but I've loved Ekman Psych for so long. It's such a cool font. Does not surprise me because it comes from Ono, which has a lot of really amazing fonts. Next we have Juniper. Juniper is all wonderful font for like that kind of like Western 70s, 60s cowboy vibe. It's, it makes great headlines. It makes great simple logos. Also another font that started to work its way more into the mainstream. I'm seeing it used a lot more in like ads right now. This next <laughs> font is called Chi with three E's. It's also by James Edmondson. And I believe this is one of his new ones because I had not seen it until like last week. It has some amazing weight variants. And just like scrolling through all of the fonts, like it's, you see like just how like the weight shifts and it's cool to see like how he designed the font to kind of like grow and collapse as you go through the variant. It's so cool. My favorite one is probably Peanut. Peanut spelled P-E-E-E. N-U-T-T. -T. I think it's really great. I haven't used it in any of my work yet, but I love it. I think it's really groovy. And I think a lot of the fonts that are already out there for like groovy or 70s fonts, like I've seen them too much. So I'm really excited to use Chi more. <laughs> so thank you, James, if you watch this, you're the best. Keep it up. <laughs> and it, oh my God, another one, another one by, oh no which is Hobo. And I know this is based off of an older version of Hobo, which is just spelled H-O-B-O. This version is H-O-B-E-A-U-X. And I think this is like a slightly more modern take on the more traditional Hobo. It's a little bit rounder. It doesn't have as much of like the like angles as the old hobo does. I use this a lot for like uh, my t-shirts at work. It's good for like older bands like Dead and Company. They love type like this. And this last one is one that I don't use very often because it's kind of a difficult one to use. Um, I typically use this for its individual letters. HWD Brylski. 
I hope I'm saying that right. I'm probably not. But this is a, a absolutely wild, wide Western font. I think it's gorgeous. I want to use this more. I've only used a few letters in pieces that I've done but I think this has so much attitude to it. I love it so much. It pairs so well with Juniper. That's an example of fonts that like I would probably use together. They have like that really great contrast. Like Juniper has that really high contrast. Brylski has that really high contrast. They're heavier at the top and bottom of the letters. And they're also in that similar kind of like Western 70s style family. I want to thank today's sponsor, which is Squarespace. As you guys know, Squarespace is a rolling sponsor on my channel. And if you checked out my portfolio video, you see why I use Squarespace and why I swear by it so much. Squarespace is one of the easiest to use, most beautiful website templates out there. And they're offering my viewers 10% off your first purchase with them. You can either hit the link in the description box below or go head over to squarespace.com slash Lauren. That's K-E-L-L-U-R-E-N. Now I know we have a lot of downtime right now. And if you are a designer, you're in school or you're just out of school working designer, or maybe you're not working, you might have some time right now to update your portfolio. But Squarespace is awesome for building your own platform for your portfolio, your galleries, you can sell your work online, you can build clients directly through your site. And I think one of the biggest things that I love about Squarespace is their customer support and also their blogs about how to pretty much do everything in their websites, all cut down into the template that you're using. And if for some reason you still have a question after reviewing all of that, their customer service is absolutely amazing and their award winning for a reason. Another really important thing about Squarespace is the fact that all of their websites are fully scalable from a big desktop to an iPad to a phone in your hand or an employer, a potential employer's hand. Having a website that automatically scales just like mm, perfectly without issue is super important. There's nothing worse than a website when it's scaled down to a phone, which is how a ton of people view personal portfolios when they're clicking around on the internet is they get to a phone and it doesn't look good. And that is the worst, especially if you're a designer who's trying to get hired. So make sure your portfolio looks great. Go head over to Squarespace and use my code Kellorn, K-E-L-L-U-R-E-N for 10% off your first purchase. That is it, ladies and gentlemen. Those are the, I don't know how many, uh, five, 10, 15, 20, 25, six, seven, eight, nine, 30, one, two, three, four. Those are my favorite 34 fonts that I'm using right now. And all of these except for the Glyph Roll are available at Adobe Fonts. So definitely go check them out if you're paying for the Adobe subscription please use Adobe Font. And go check out Glyph World if you want something a little bit fun, a little bit, you know, like quirky and you wanna start playing with some really difficult type, definitely go download the font pack from Glyph World. That is all I have for you guys for today's video. I hope you enjoyed watching. I hope you go check out Adobe Fonts, go check out Glyph World, download some of these fonts. I'll leave all of the names of the fonts that I mentioned today in the description box below so you don't have to go scrub back through the video to find one that I mentioned. Definitely like switch up your uh, type every once in a while. I'm changing my type out like every few weeks. Use this time, make some cool work, practice, make something cool with some of the fonts that I suggested. Send it to me on Instagram. I would love to see it. Um, thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys in my next video. Goodbye.